Scotland is a country which holds many mysterious tales of ancient beings who were said to once dwell within the astonishingly beautiful highlands. From fairies to ancient sea monsters, many a legend is said to be found here, including the odd piece of compelling evidence to back up such claims. However, our next Scottish mystery of focus is abundant with evidence. In fact, the evidence left surrounding this mysterious ancient technology is actually the mystery itself. Over 200 years ago, archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins found to dot the rural countryside began to notice a remarkable characteristic of about 60 mysterious structures found dotting the Scottish Highlands. Made using rocks with no mortar, instead, the rocks on the outer layer of these structures upon completion went through an as yet unknown process of vitrification. The builders of these extreme ancient forts were somehow able to heat the stones to such a degree that the outer layer actually turned to glass, fixing the stones in place and making them virtually impenetrable to erosion, meaning that the true age of these miraculous structures may be far, far older than we are led to believe. Although, for the first 250 years of study, these forts were presumed to have been exclusive to Scotland, thanks to the results of the research, they have actually begun to turn up in other regions of the world, most specifically Western Europe. With such overwhelming evidence in the face of adversity, academia, it would seem, have reluctantly been resigned to agreement with the extremely controversial facts displayed within these ancient stone forts. Quote, no lime or cement has been found in any of these structures, all of them presenting the peculiarity of being more or less consolidated by the fusion of the rocks of which they are built. This fusion, which has been caused by the application of intense heat, is not equally complete in the various forts, or even in the walls of the same fort. In some cases, the stones are only partially melted and calcined. In others, their adjoining edges are fused so that they are firmly cemented together. In many instances, pieces of rock are enveloped in a glassy enamel-like coating, which binds them into a uniform whole, and at times, though rarely, the entire length of the wall presents one solid mass of vitreous substance. It is not clear why or how the walls were subjected to vitrification." End quote. Although the explanation put forward after examining these facts could be seen as a desperate attempt to continue to deny the existence of a highly aware, highly capable, intercontinental ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet. Who built these forts? What clearly advanced yet ancient heat technology did they use to turn the outer casing stones to glass? With the pace of such discoveries being revealed to the world increasing, it is only a matter of time before we find out. In 1932, gold prospectors searching within the San Pedro Mountains of Wyoming would make a groundbreaking discovery, a find which for a brief period of time exposed to the world the past existence of a group of people, a secret unexplainable race which has been successfully covered up for over a century. Cast into the realm of folklore, this group of people could be attributed to tales of gnomes or hobbits. The once native crow people spoke of their ferocious nature for many hundreds of years. No taller than 36 inches in height, according to William R. Corliss in his 1978 book Ancient Man, a Handbook of Puzzling Artifacts, citing the Anthropological Institute, Journal 6, 100, 1876. An ancient little people graveyard of vast proportions was once found in Coffee County. It was estimated that there were as many as 100,000 separate individuals buried there. And in 1932, two gold prospectors would thankfully expose the existence of the little people of Priori Mountain to the world. Deep within a mine on the mountain, they discovered a secret lair, a tomb, somehow placed deep within the rock face. Within this tomb, they found the mummified remains of a tiny humanoid. Now known as Pedro, according to Dr. Henry Shapiro, 
an anthropologist from the American Museum of Natural History, along with the several x-rays he made, proving his authenticity. Pedro was 65 years old when he died, and he had unfortunately suffered a terrible fall, which had dislocated several of the vertebrae in his back. It seemed to Dr. Shapiro, a head wound that he had apparently suffered some short time after may have been the result of his relinquished life, in a curious act of mercy by his fellow tribe members. The Crow tribe attest to these tiny people once being gifted warriors, feared by all those in the surrounding areas. They told of the little people murdering all who ventured near them, even decimating a group of 200 strong warriors who mistakenly trespassed into their territories during the night. Pedro ended up in a pharmacy in Wyoming, and for seven years he was a successful local attraction. One day, when an unusual businessman offered to buy him, after apparently paying a very large sum, the man disappeared with Pedro, and he has never been seen of again. The only existing mummy of the little people, it seems, was successfully confiscated during the late 1950s. To this day, it is not known where Pedro is, although for the person who locates his current residence, we have been made aware of a substantial cash prize for the person who can bring him back into the public arena or at least enable further testing. If you know where Pedro is, please do get in touch. There is someone with a rather large present waiting for you. There are countless Neolithic sites found all over the world which defy explanation. Not only are these ancient structures built with unimaginably huge megalithic blocks, but the precision that went into their construction defy modern academic understanding. However, we have postulated and hypothesized that these academically claimed primitive structures are only primitive in appearance. For the knowledge that went into their construction, knowledge we have often exposed and shared here on our channel, now lost to history, along with their mysterious constructors, is of an extremely advanced nature. As such, we believe that these menhirs, mounds, hinges, and in particular dolmens were constructed by a remnant of a civilization that were quite possibly responsible for the most famous, most baffling structures on Earth, which are also usually found in similar locations, these being the original foundations of Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, among many others. We believe that the knowledge which clearly went into the building of these structures could have only been attained by a technologically advanced culture, with these surviving groups utilizing what remained of this knowledge, absent the destroyed technologies, to create these awe-inspiring sites. We have previously noted on our channel the ancient Neolithic mound known as Maze Howe, an ancient mound which can be found upon the Ornkey Islands, Scotland. Our initial reason for covering this site was the enormous megalithic stones that went into the construction of its entranceway, and quite possibly the exoskeleton buried beneath the many tons of earth that now form and protects the still existing mound itself. However, there exists another Neolithic chamber, found in Ireland, that not only shares the same remarkably huge, unexplainable stones making up its construction, but also a precision of solar alignment that boggles the modern mind. Known as New Grain's Passage, like Maze Howe, it is a circular mound with a structure hidden beneath many tons of earth. However, it also shares a dedication to the precession of the sun with an alignment with the winter solstice that could have only been accomplished by a group with tremendous capabilities and indeed advanced astronomical knowledge. Although most of the structure is buried under the mound, the stones in which are visible, like Maze Howe, are easily identifiable and many tons in weight, some more than likely upwards of 20 to 30 tons. Yet these enormous stones have been placed with such care, elegance, and precision that on the winter solstice, its alignment allows the entire complex to be lit up by the winter sun. This event is well known, and many people flock to the site every solstice to witness this wonder, 
Yet academia still stubbornly deny that these structures were undoubtedly created by a group with tremendous intellect, possibly leftover knowledge, now forgotten and lost, of the precise travel of the sun's passage through the sky. We might realize that as they walk in, the floor rises, such that the actual floor here is level with the roof box. And that means that when the sun rose 3200 BC, the light would have actually reached across the floor and way back into the chamber there. Nowadays, we have to wait about 11 minutes before the sun actually enters the chamber. The result of that is that it, it, the sun actually, the sunlight ends up more or less in the middle of this main chamber here. So the builders of Newgrange actually built it so it was perfect for sunrise. Were these alignments created merely with a motive for heating these layers? Or were they created with a more profound reason? Were these ancient people worshippers of the sun? And in addition, were they attempting to leave future intuitive generations, like us, clues as to their intelligence and capabilities, giving us an opportunity to ponder, hypothesis, and possibly unravel as to how they knew such knowledge, where this knowledge came from, or indeed where it and they went. Many people are now convinced, after many years of study, that the most famous Neolithic site within the UK, Stonehenge, was once a solar calendar, an extremely complex one. And due to the precision that is clearly encapsulated within these two mounds, we tend to agree. These people were obviously devout sun worshippers, but were also, due to the immense size of the stones used in their construction, attempting to leave a visible legacy for vigilant future generations to ponder over and possibly discover information they were trying to tell us we are yet to realize. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Polygonal masonry is undoubtedly a top trump argument, along with tool mark patterning, and indeed pyramidal and other structural forms which can be found across the globe, which prove there was not only once an ocean-going ancient civilization, but a worldwide highly advanced superpower who once dominated the Earth. The proof is there for all to see, yet en masse, how they incorporate these proofs into their critical decision-making faculties is still up for debate. Yet regardless, this proof of their past capabilities are still on display the world over, a duly awarded testament to their building prowess. Although many have attempted to explain these stones, some claiming they are of artificial or geopolymer origins, others claim they are somehow a reformed rock from a plaster of Paris type constituent of the original stone itself. Some even claim a plant was responsible. Any definitive answer as to how these stones were shaped and placed, or indeed any recreation of these claimed methods, elude us to this day. A lost technology from a now lost, yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Cusco, which translates as the city of the Puma, holds some of the most exquisite and best preserved polygonal masonry to be found anywhere. Home to the famous 12-sided stone, Something which many are not aware of, however, is that it is also home to dozens of carvings and structures, which were intended as artistic masonry renditions of animals, one of which, namely, the puma. Academic hypothesis suggests that these creations were built by the Inca to once form the boundary walls of an ancient temple. Yet like the countless other areas we explore here on our channel, any explanation as to how the walls were constructed, or indeed why pumas and other animals were incorporated into this enigmatic stonework, is absent from all and any academically accepted historical description of their origin. We feel that these structures were built for a reason, even stretching as far as Egypt, present as casing stones on the pyramids of Egypt themselves. 
They wanted future man to witness this stonework, built to last and to remain immovable. It is as if they were trying to tell us something about their existence, and indeed the true history and perhaps future fate of mankind. We find Cusco's puma, and indeed the lost knowledge itself, highly compelling.